Moss Motors currently builds superchargers for a number of classic British cars and more in development. Aside from the marketing aspects of supercharging, the increased power and the improved drivability, what is a supercharger? What does it do? How does it work? Let's discuss some of the basics. As an engine's running, it draws in air. For example, a 1.8 liter engine is theoretically supposed to displace 1.8 liters of engine each time it cycles. In a perfect world, a 1.8 liter engine would draw in 1.8 liters of air for each 1.8 liters that is displaced. It rarely works like that. In the real world, we measure what's called volumetric efficiency. Volumetric efficiency is a measurement of how much air the rotor actually processes compared to what it would in a perfect setting. Something like 80% volumetric efficiency is typical for stock engines. At that rate, our 1.8 liter engine will process 1.44 liters instead of 1.8. Now, most engines create vacuum and draw air in through their intake manifold. A car that does that, or is breathing normally, is said to be naturally aspirated. Now, if we want to get the engine up to 100% volumetric efficiency, or even higher, we need to help it breathe. This is called forced induction. Superchargers are used to create forced induction. In essence, we are pushing air into the motor rather than waiting for the motor to suck the air in. This means our engine will process more air with each cycle, and since our engines derive their power from processing air and fuel, we manage to squeeze more air into the motor, we're going to get more power out of it. So how does it work? Well, a supercharger is referred to as a positive displacement pump. In other words, it, well, in layman's terms, it just simply won't take no for an answer. Let me explain how that works. What I have here on my desk is an 834-882, the so-called Texas cooler fan. This is used on Austin Healy's. Okay, now we all know what a fan does, so in your mind's eye, I imagine it's spinning. We all know that the blades are at a pitch. As the blades are rotating at a pitch, they're going to try to herd the air in the direction that we want it to go, and they do a pretty good job of it. However, some of the air is going to leak around the leading edge of the fan blade and slip around. Some will sleek around the, the tailing edge of the fan blade and do the same thing, and some will even slip around the end of it and come around again. Okay, this system is said to be passive because the air can escape. In fact, while this is operating, if some of the air doesn't want to go, it's not going to go. And that's a problem or weakness that all bladed fans share, and that's why we don't use a fan to push air into the motor. Now, let's take a look at a positive displacement pump. This is an old oil pump that I have in my hands here. Oil enters from this side and out goes out from this side here. And when it's operating, it's doing this. This is exactly what it does. In your mind, you can see very clearly that I have a series of teeth on one side and valleys between the teeth, and on the other gear, I have the exact opposite. So the teeth from one mate with the valleys of the other. As she's turning, imagine right here, as this comes around, as this turns, the tooth in this valley gets pulled out. As it gets yanked out of there, it creates a, val a little vacuum right there, and oil is drawn in right there to fill that valley. Now as this turns, the fingers of the teeth come up here and they come very, very close to the edge of the housing, so close in fact that the oil can't get out. And as this turns, the oil that's in there is trapped. Each one of these little valleys has a pocket of oil, it can't go anywhere. It's like being inside a revolving door. So it comes all the way around, and she's operating like this, and when we get to this end, the oil that's in there meets as these fingers come in and fill the valleys and squeezes the oil out. It's the same as if you grab a tube of toothpaste and squeeze it. What's inside has to come out. It's positive displacement. The oil has no option, it's going to be squeezed out. So she gets drawn in here, carried around, and as the fingers fall into the valleys here, it pushes the oil out there. That's how positive displacement pump works. Now inside the supercharger, we have something very, very similar. In fact, it's the same principle. I have a series here, There's a, this is trilobal, there are two sets. Each one has three lobes, okay, like the fingers of the little gears, and three valleys. And while this is operating, she's doing this. This is inside the supercharger. Now, the air enters from here. We already know this from looking at our oil pump. It enters. As these valleys open up, they pull air in. As this finger comes around, it meets the edges of the housing. The air can't get out. It's like being in a revolving door. And when it comes around to the bottom, the finger falls in, fills the hole, and forces the air out the bottom. 
That's what's going on inside this. We have a housing, which looks like this. And you can see it's kind of a VH shaped housing like we saw before. And the same thing happens. The lobes are gonna come around following this edge right here. So air comes in, gets trapped in the revolving door, comes around, gets squeezed out, and leaves through the bottom of the supercharger housing right there. When it's together, it looks something like this. It's a real snug fit. Okay, and that's it. So when we're talking about a supercharger, what we're talking about is a positive displacement pump, which converts a naturally aspirated engine into a forced induction engine. We are going to take our volumetric efficiency, which is probably down around 80%, and push it up to over 100%. The net result is we get more power and better drivability from a small engine.